access now to to share my screen with you. Um, you should in just a second. Okay. Oh, beautiful. A quick note um, while you're loading that up, uh, please remember to put all the questions you have in the question and answer window. Um, we'll be in time at the end for Q&A. So it's a lot easier if you put your questions in the Q&A window rather than in the chat window. So um, please do that. Thank you. Perfect. Can we all see me now? Yes. Perfect. Welcome. I'm Jennifer Gandaris. I'm a high school English teacher and Google Apps uh, teaching trainer. Love Google. And hopefully you enjoy this time with Anne and I. Anne, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Yes, I'm Anne Dodson. I'm the Technology Application Specialist for the South Levy School District in Langley, Washington. I'm also a Google Certified Teacher and a Google App Certified Trainer. And I have had the privilege of working with Jennifer for the past three years. Uh, we have have recently gone Google in our district, and many of the questions that we've gotten have been about organizing their mail. The students have been overwhelmed with the abundance of mail, and they felt that archiving was just putting all their mail in a big bucket. Hence, we began thinking about this. So here, we would like to share with you what we've learned about organizing your mail with labels and filters. Here we go. Uh, first, you need to know a few terms. Um, settings. If you look at the upper right hand corner of your computer your screen, you'll see it in a little bit here, is the gear symbol. And that will open your mail settings. We'll be working from that a little bit later today. Labels, which are similar to folders, um, is a way to identify messages and keep them in archives. It's a way to be able to find them more easily. Filters, it's after a label is applied, you can set up filters to help identify and clean up your mailbox. And we'll see what my mail looks like without filters and labels as we go through this process together. It's quite messy right now. Um, and labs. Labs are a little special love that Ann and I have. Um, labs are things that are beta, they're experimental, and potentially can be put back into the app suite so they'll be there permanently. So words we need to know. And Gmail labels. When you're looking at your Gmail, you're immediately seeing that toolbar across the top and uh, above your mail, and you'll see the uh, bar called labels. And Google Mail is easily organized with labels. Um, you click on labels, and you can code and name your different labels to organize your mail. So we're going to be looking at something like the uh, the screenshot in just a minute. Uh, when you pull down the labels tool at the very bottom, you'll see create new or manage labels. This is just one of the ways that you can get to the mail the mail settings to go ahead and create your labels. Um, so in the lower half, if you create that, if you click on that, you may um, create a label and name it whatever you'd like. Also, a way that you can have nested labels, and you'll see this coming up too. And nested na labels is a label within a label, kind of like a folders or in your those old fashioned filing cabinets. Do we even use those anymore? Not going too quickly here. We're going to be talking a little bit about this and then going out to email and, and exploring each of these different areas. So you'll be able to do this again on your own. To messages from your inbox, you're going to select them. There's a little square box on the towards the left hand side. You'll check in that. And you can Click how to where you want to move these messages. Um, there's a little move to label, and you just move that, or you may drag and drop. And once you have your your email labeled, you can go ahead and hit archive. Nice thing about this is it clears up all that extra stuff that's in your email right now, and but you'll be able to find it. You'll be able to look in the archiving section and use that label as a way to find it instead of a giant bucket where everything goes in and it's harder to sift through. So when you're archiving and when you're searching from your archiving, you can search for word in a message, by a certain label, or from the person that it's from. What um, the details look like. Notice how on the right, the left-hand side are all the colors. Right, that they're identifying with. Uh, this is a screenshot of Anne's email, and 
you know, you can see that Google is like a royal blue and home is a purple color. Um, and each one of these labels has a color. And you can even touch the little dialog boxes on the side to do even more tasks. Okay. These are some of the labs in Gmail that we absolutely love. One is um, inserting images and allows you to insert an image into your email. And um, just like you would any other email, you have to enable that. What we're using currently is nesting the nesting lab where you nest one email file within another. So you have this long list of labels. Note that when you do that, the color box moves to the right side instead of the left side when you uh, nested labels. So that's really interesting to see um, that moves and your ability to click, right click or left click and, and get the dialog box changes from one side to the other when you enable the nested labels. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. The other ones that we look is the undo button. Um, you know, if you send those email messages and you need a couple more seconds, this allows you to have some more time. The sneak peek is one that Anne turned me on to is if you enable sneak peek and you scroll your email, you don't have to open up the, the next screen to see what it says. It will actually pop up in a little pop-up window. So that way you can scroll your mail quickly and get to the things that you need to deal with um, quickly. Um, and the other one is create a document. You can, in this after you enable create a document, you can take email and create a document with it. Uh, one reason why I would use this is I got an email about how teaching certifications was changing and I needed to have the information and get it handy. So I just clicked on create a document and I would save that email in a couple of places that worked for me, but definitely in the document section and help me out. Another way to use that might be if you have a lot of messages that have come. Let's say you have a parent that just calls that sends you a message every day, and you want to keep a dialogue. Uh, you want to keep up with those. Once they've come in, let's say you have 16 or 20, you can create a document and then it'll just go out and save them all just as a document. Every message, every reply will be in one document. Works really nicely. Exactly. I've actually been using that also with uh, my son has recently gone blind, and so as we're talking about special education and things, it's just easier to put it all into a document than having to go back and filter through lots of emails. Uh, let's go out to my email and try some of these things here. You can see I have this long list of emails, and there's only one in the middle of the screen that has um, a label that says Anne on it. Um, so what we need to do is go through and organize these. If you go up, if you look up in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see this gear symbol. And if you click on this, mail settings. So you should be able to see a lovely picture of me midway through the page. Um, I'm going to go over to working now. Labels. Come on up. I'm losing my mind here. Okay, labels. And I'm going to create a new label. Looking at my email earlier, one of the labels I know I need to complete is called English Companion. It's a website that I use on my classroom all the time. So I'm going to type in English Companion Ning. And it's that I have, since I have already enabled nesting labels, it, it gives me an opportunity to nest this. I want to nest this one on my English teaching resources. I'm create. Okay, now over here, if I click this, I should have, look, there is my English Companion under there. Let's go and look at my mail again and see what other things I might need to organize. One thing I'm noticing is I have um, some emails from Family Connect, and that it would be a blind resource. So I'm going to come over here to more actions. Now notice the first time I took you to the gears, and you hit mail settings here. But you can also come to more actions, oops, uh, labels, Manage labels, and same page again. And I'll tile this one. There's going to be a heading for me, so I'm going to tile this one 
blonde. And, right. and I'm going to another little right under that. Uh, and this is going to be my son's name, Luke. Versus. And that's this under blind. Create. Okay. I should be able to see, uh, at least off the side, here I have now blind. And I'm going to now move some of my email. I was, now where did it go? Here it is, Family Connect. I'm going to click on this box to highlight it. I'm going to go to Move to. I'm going to blonde re Luke resources. And email should go there. Now I haven't colored um, the one. Oops, get all these things off of here. Um, so I links to Will. Let's go ahead and color this. So if you look off to the side, here's my blonde. And I'm going to make this the color my son loves, which is red. Set color. There we go. Now let's go ahead and take a look at labs. We're going to go back over to this thing. Mailings. Go to tabs. This is something that um, you need to enable if you want to do nesting. Um, and here you can see that I have selected and enabled um, my nest label. So see that I have the counter gadget on my sidebar, all sorts of different things. So if you explored this area, I would definitely time to explore this. What note here is that the enabled the labs that you enable then move to the top. And so if you scroll down through that list, at the bottom will be all the labs that are still there that you have not enabled. So there are quite a few of them. Um, I have most of them enabled on mine, but as you notice, there are just a lot more, and they're really fun to explore and find something that you like to use. But suggesting a few here that, that we're getting on a more daily career. Let's go back more time um, to box and move a few things over just to see how easy it is to go ahead and move things. Um, if you miss, you'll see a lot of details that are paid subscriptions or related to the teaching companion here. So I'm just going to highlight a bunch of these. I love that I can go through, scroll down, and get ones that I need at a time. Here's another one. I'm going to hit Move to English Courses, English Companion Name on that. And I'll be in the Let's go ahead and color this one so you can really do it. You know, I actually like this. You go to the custom color because I'm one of those people that likes to have nice background colors and things. And now I have those all labeled. The nice thing was once you have gone and labeled things, then go ahead and archive them, and it will clear them up out of your, of your email. You'll still be able to search for them, but you won't have them blocking up so much information. Anyone to add about that? No, nope. good job. Okay. So, Leah, I just want to go through here and I'm going to take this and drag and drop her. Actually, no, I'm not. Come back over here. Move this right. Hmm. Move her to Anne. I'm going to go ahead and archive that. And be able to find her whenever I need her. Okay. On back to our table here. And about setting up filters. Okay. One of the things that you can do once you've got your labels set up is you can add filters to organize your inbox so that it's organized as the mail comes in. So. Labels will provide you with a way to group your email, and filters will provide you with a tool to apply those automatically and do several other things automatically. You can write your mail directly to the label. You can leave it in your inbox. You can bypass your inbox altogether. 
So let's take a look at how you can uh, create filters. Go on the gears again on the mail settings, the gear on the upper right, and then the filters tab. Bottom of that, you will see create a new filter link right in the center of the box that's displayed when you uh, when you go to filters. You can enter a name or an email address in the from field. And ha you can say, for example, we say from the secretary name and have the words daily bulletin because we want all of those to go into one particular uh, label. So we put both of those, but you can simply put the name or the email address in the from, and that's all you need. And click the next step. Next step, you choose your options. So you can skip the inbox, you can mark it as red, you can start it, you can automatically apply the labels here, you can forward, you can read it. You can say don't, never send this to spam, and you can also choose a can response. The can response now you would have had to have enabled in your lab setting in order to have that. When you do this, it will pick up every message that you have related to this, and you can check the box that says also apply the filter to, and it will give you how many messages are in your inbox. So from now on, once you've done that, a message that comes from this email or this name or has these words in it will have a selected choice on it. So if you receive messages that you don't want to clutter in your inbox, but you still want to be able to read it at some point, then create a filter and find a label. For example, she might skip the inbox and apply the label and and start it. And then she would have, uh, Jennifer would have in her mailbox all of the messages that came from me, not in her inbox. Box, but they would be in the start folder as well as in the label. Uh, in the label, I said folder, but in the label that has my name on it. Um, that's a good way to do it. Other one that I've used is, you know, many times you use your email when you're shopping, and let's say somebody has your email address and they send you something every day, and you just start to have it. You can say skip the inbox and delete it, and that message will be never come into your inbox again. So you can use to automatically archive those boxes then, or you can choose to leave them in your inbox, and then it's labeled, and so all you would have to hit then would be archive in order to archive the message, and it would still be in your label. Okay, uh, move to the next page, and let's go out to my mail, and let's look at some of the filters in my mail. This is my mail at school, and as you can see, I have quite a few colors already in there. So um, if you would click on um, the one, click on Eric for me. Be Eric. It's a label with tech team. It's about six down. Click on, and I can simply archive that. Click the archive button, and it's archived. I don't have to drag and drop it. I don't have to move it. I can archive it, and if I go over to tech team, it will be there. And or I can search for it by label. Or I can support by his name. So that's the advantage of the filters that I can see. As you can see, I have filters in on almost all my messages except the last couple that came in today. And one of those was already set to filter automatically. That uh, is really, um, really makes your inbox easy to handle. All of these messages can now be archived. Uh, actually, uh, if you would go through each one of them, archive they can all disappear right out of my mailbox except the one that says me, and I want to use that one. Okay. So that one in just a minute. Want me to click on them like yes. again? Click on each one. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's enough. Now hit archive. The problem, folks. So that's one of the reasons why I'm not operating this. Um, I'm lucky my computer's working tonight. <laughs> so those then automatically archived. Another one thing that you can do, let's say you have a message, click uh, click on me, the second one down, uh, pick in the box there. You can go to more actions and things you could do here. If you call more actions and drop that menu, you can create an event from this, but you can also create a filter right from this email. So let's go to... Uh, Let's go create an event first, and let's 
see what you can do. So this is a meeting that I have scheduled. It automatically loads my my calendar, and then I can fill in the details for it right from my mail screen. But then to go out to my calendar, I can create the event right there. Um, it will usually fill in the side. Uh, well, you can notice I have quite a few things enabled there, add-in gadgets and so forth. There are a lot of things you can do there that will make life much easier when you're handling your mail. I think that's great. Jennifer. Thank you. Okay. And the next screen, let's go back to the next screen. And I think that will take us right out to the Google Help screen. When you know, um, we talked about creating an event from your mail, I covered it very fast. <laughs> um, and then you can go out to Google Help. Anytime you need help, here this is the right place to go to check out sites, chat, docs, start page. But this up at the top, get out with Google Apps email. This is where you want to go to the Gmail Help Center. You can watch a video overview. You can come to this one that will be archived, I believe, in our um, in our well certified teacher files on YouTube, and, and get the help you need. We have a two page spreadsheet. If any of you are interested in it, that have has just a that's just designed to be a handout. That we'll be glad to send you if you send us an email. And uh, Becky, I believe we are ready for questions. Great, thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A window, and we will um, start answering them. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Very clear. Uh, I like how you showed us step by step on how, how to. It's your side of us. Exactly. <laughs> Can you filter for two different messages? Question. Can you two messages but one filter? Do you know? I'm not sure what, um, what the question is asking. Are you saying that if you have a message come in, you can send it to two different filters? So you can filter it to one label um, and to another? Uh, please clarify the question and, and put it back in the Q&A, and we'll be able to answer that. Okay, so said yes, that's what he said. And I would say you can do that easily, but you'd probably have to do it twice. So two filters, the message. But yeah, I don't think you can do it at the same time. Right there, Becky? Exactly, yes. So you'll when you create a filter, one of the... Um, options is to apply a label, and you can't apply um, labels. Yeah, you can only pick one label to apply. But if you set up two separate filters, then you'd be able to. Uh, then both labels would be applied when that message came in. Mm -hmm. Question. Good question. Arthur. Set of uh, uh, filter to forward an email. Under filters, you can also forward your email. It gives you an option to forward all of those messages to another email. Um, if you got, can you open up someone's email just to show what that would look like? Uh, Jennifer, can you do that? I can do that. Filter. Click on something. Yeah. More filter, more messages like these. Mm -hmm. That that would be great. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, say now. 
And you can forward this message to Messages you can choose. Okay. Exactly. That will work in um, in most cases. If you're using a Google app for education account, if your administrator has disabled um, POP or IMAP access, then their chances are that you won't be able to forward your messages to another address. Um, but if you're using just a regular Gmail account, or if you're using a Google Apps account, um, that setting is not in place, then uh, exactly how you showed it, that's, that's what it will look like to forward it to another address. Right. I was able to go into my Google Apps mail and enable the map, the POP and the IMAP myself. So that okay. one did not block an hour. And that's under general, uh, under your settings, under general. You can enable the or manage your account, one of those two. You can enable that POP and IMAP. Okay, for those that are listening, remember that if you would like to have a handout on this, uh, email me, and I will be glad to send that out to you. Yes, and we can. We will be recording this webinar and typing up um, the Q and A, um, the, the question and answers, so that we'll make sure that we send you guys the link. And I meant to the number of labels you can have that I've been able to find anywhere. So the published limit, I think, is 1,800, but, you know, who would really want to manage that? It's a serious amount of, that's a serious amount of email. Yeah, I think anything over 500 is really discouraged because um, things can get buggy. So um, please share 500 labels. Well, we can round um, for a few more minutes, um, uh, and, uh, and and Jennifer, if you want to share your email addresses one more time, um, that would be helpful. Um, if you don't mind, if people contact you with questions, and then we will be sharing out the link to this document, um, to the presentation, and to the Q and A um, session that we're having. Well, I'll start. Uh, my, if you send it to my private email, which is Gary. Yes, G A N D R I A S twelve seventeen at email dot com. You will be able to catch me or N. I'm on in right now into the chat window. Wonderful. And see if I can send that. Uh, I'm not. I cannot. It's A Dotson A D O T S O N at S W dot net. That's W E D N E T. Dot edu. Right, and I'll put those into the chat window. Um, okay. Really quickly, so that. Well, thanks again for joining us today. Uh, please feel free to reach out to um, Anne or Jennifer if you have any questions going forward. And look out for that email from me um, in the next or tomorrow with the link to the recorded webinar. And questions. We appreciate it okay. so much. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.